So this morning, I'm going to continue the series on the in-between. First, we discuss, first we discuss embracing your in-between. You can go to the well page. If you have not subscribed to the, to the YouTube channel, please do so. You can listen to uh, that series, my God, I mean, that, that message, my God, embracing your in-between. This message is about the next part of your in-between, which is called the attitude. So we're going to turn to the book of Genesis 37, start at verse number 1, reading from the New Living. When you have it, say amen. amen. And the word of God reads, So Jacob settled again in the land of Canaan, where his father had lived as a foreigner. This is the account of Jacob and his family. When Joseph, my God, was 17 years old, he often tended his flock. So he's a young teenager. He worked for his half-brothers, the sons of his father's wives, Bilhi and Zilpi. But Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things his brothers were doing. Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in the old age. Say a right there. Some of y'all was probably mishandled pushed aside because you grew up in a home where there was favoritism between siblings. I personally did not experience that out of seven kids my mama had, but I know some of y'all have. So look at that. Jacob loved Joseph. Jacob was the father. Joseph was the son. More than any of his father's children because Joseph had been born to him in, a, in his old age. So one day Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph. A beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a kind word to him. Verse 5 says, One night Joseph had a dream. And when he told his brothers about it, they hated him even more than ever. Listen to this dream. He said, we were out in the fields tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly, uh, my bundle stood up and your, bundle all, your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. Verse 8 says, his brother responded, so you think you will be our king? Do you? They prophesied. See, some of the things you, people saying about you, they prophesying your destiny. So why you get mad if they're telling the truth? Do you actually think you will reign, reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way he talked about them. Verse 9 says, soon Joseph had another dream and began, and again he told his brothers about it. Listen, I have had another dream, he said. The sun, moon, and eleven stars bowed low before me. Prophesying. The time he told the dream, this time he told the dream to his father as well as to his brothers, but his father scolded him. What kind of dream is that? He asked, will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? Verse 11 says, but while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered uh, what the dream really meant. Go a little farther. Soon after Joseph's brothers went to the pastor, pastored their father's flock in Shechem when they had been gone for some time Jacob said to Joseph your brothers are pasturing the sheep at Shechem get ready and I will send you to them I am ready to go Joseph replied not knowing what was on his way waiting for him go and see how your brothers and flocks are getting along Jacob said then come back and bring me a report. Jump down to verse 17. I'm going to read this one piece of verse. Yes, the man told him he was looking for his brother. Joseph was. They have moved on from her. God spoke to me this morning reading that. It's time for some of you to move on from where you at. And as I just read to you from the missing ingredient, my God, moving on is not just you changing geographically. It's a mindset. You've been stuck too long. So, Father God, thank you for the few minutes that I have. Thank you for giving me an audience to be able to minister your truth to. I yield and I surrender. And I thank you, Father God, for first-time salvation. 
I thank you, Father God, for restoration. I thank you, Father God, for deliverance. I thank you for emotional healing. I thank you, Father God, for a paradigm shift in the mind. Father God, go up into our minds and start the process of renovation. Because we understand according to the Constitution, it's with the mind that we serve you. Father God, don't let us have a form of godliness, quoting scripture, and don't know the voice of the God of the scripture. We come before your throne grateful, and we approach you with humility. Strip us of religion. Strip, strip us, Father God, of religion. Have your way. Help us to evaluate ourselves. And what we need, Father God, correction, convict us so that we may change. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The title of this sermon is Watch Your Attitude. As I shared a couple of weeks ago, my God, uh, about embracing, you got to embrace, you got to embrace, you got to embrace. Uh, as I said, you have to, it's like embracing and hugging someone. My God, so you have to embrace. God gave Joseph a dream at 17 years old and told him pretty much that he would be in second in command of a powerful nation. But what God did not say to Joseph, I did not show Joseph, I say to Joseph, y'all listen to me, did not say or show Joseph was everything that he had to embrace and go through on his way to his destiny. And this is where I understand, and I thank God for Bishop Neil Ellis, my God, who, who I derive my thought from, his book, my God, called The In-Between, my God. He talks about, my God, well, he didn't mention this, but I'm going to mention this, and this is what I see since I've been a Christian, my God, for 24 plus years. That's not a long time. But what I have seen is that, my God, who, my God, God will give us dreams, God will show us our gifts, my God, God will reveal our purpose, God will also show us our passions, my God. But what God has not, my God, always showed us is all of the stuff that you and I have to go through in order to fulfill what God has called us to do. And so this is what get 95, and I'm stretching the numbers, my God, uh, from 90 to 95. Come on. Huh? You know, 95 of the people, my God, quit on God, back up on God, on their way to fulfilling that what God has called them. Because they get excited about the dream, but they don't understand the price they got to pay to fulfill the dream. When I think about my brother, John Starks, my God, who slept in the Tulsa, is it International Airport? Tulsa International Airport, my God, when he got invited to the New York Knicks basketball camp. And there was only one flight leaving out that morning at 6 in the morning. At the time, my brother, Scott McCorders, my, one of my brothers in the law, Scott McCorders, officer Scott McCorders at the time, was working at the airport. And my God, him and John went to school together. And he happened to be doing his nightly walk because he worked the graveyard. My God. And, and he happened to walk up on John. John, my God, packed up one bag mm, and, and some change of clothes. And he slept in the airport because John purposed in his heart. I can't get nobody to go somewhere. Oh, my God. He purposed in his mind, his heart, his mind, that he would not, my God, miss this plane. And so he stayed, so instead, he slept in the airport. How bad do you want to change? <laughs> my God, he slept in the airport, Brandon, because it was only one flight getting out to New York, and he was called to go to the basketball camp of the Knicks, my God. And he purposed in his mind that I got to do whatever it takes. I will not miss this plane, my God, so I'm going to sleep in the airport. And John slept in the airport, and the rest of it is history. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Mm. The rest of it is history. He purposed in his mind, my God, that I will not miss this plane. And he ended up making the basketball team for the New York Knicks after being rejected from five different colleges. And he became, my God, y'all know what it is. Come on. He dunked on Mike. Yeah, he got his money. Mike got him, but he got his money as well. And he got to experience a whole lot of things in life. But what I love about the story is because he was determined not to miss the flight. That would get him to New York so he can go to basketball camp and try to make this team. Yeah. How bad do you want to shift from your situation? How bad do you want to soar above what you're going through? And see, all that I'm saying is, my God, what John had was an attitude that refused to lose. He purposed in his mind that when I go to camp, he told his family, he said, I will not come back without a, without, without a, a contract. You know the story, Pastor. He did not come back to Tulsa, Pastor Tedrick, without a contract. A multi-million dollar contract is that. 
Come on, somebody. He purposed in his mind, Savion, that I will not come back to Tulsa, Oklahoma without a contract. He was determined, my God, to make it in the NBA. After being kicked out of five different schools, all right? My God, they said he wasn't good enough. They said he wasn't going to make it. And then the rest of it is history because he didn't let people's opinion defy who he was. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. I'm still talking about attitude. That ain't even in my notes. Attitude definition, one of them is, is a set of way of thinking or feeling about someone or something. People right now, as I teach my pastors and ministers, are voting on me, even as I stand here right now. Those that's online are voting. Anytime you stand up before people, people are voting, whether they approve of you or not approve of you. When you first walk into a room, people are voting on you. When you come into the room. So you can come into a room with a nasty attitude. You already disqualified yourself that quick with certain people. I'm going somewhere. Attitude is a subtle way of thinking or feeling about someone or something. Typically, one, of the, one that is reflected in a person's behavior. There is nothing as powerful, church, as an attitude. And it dictates our response to the present and determines the quality of our future. Your attitude right now about life, about whatever you have been through up until this day and time is determining the quality. If you don't like the quality, look at the attitude. If you don't like what's producing external, look at what's going on internal. You ain't got nobody to blame but yourself because you control your decisions, you control your thoughts. Come on, somebody. If didn't nobody put a gun up to your head, you are in control of your own thoughts. And so you and I, I and you, determine the quality that's heavy of life that we want to live. So, my God, so, so therefore, my God, oh my God, if I don't like the quality, I got to look at what's going in, so, cause that's what's coming out. You determine, not man, you. Not a woman, you. Not your boss, you. Not your, whatever, you determine the quality of life that you choose to live. Do anybody believe that? Yeah. Okay. Many motivational speakers say that attitude plays a significant role and someone's success, I'm going somewhere. The beginning of leadership, y'all, mm, servanthood, and success is defined by our attitude. A positive attitude is a matter of thinking, write that down, speaking, and acting. A positive attitude is a matter of thinking, speaking, and acting. Your thoughts cause you to speak, your thoughts, my God, dictate your actions. It's a pattern that starts in the mind that produces the quality of life. Many of us want a quality of life, but we ain't willing to do nothing with the most important aspect of our soul, which is bring our mind in submission to our spirit and be renovated. Romans 12 and 2. My God. And so, my God, also our thinking, speaking, and acting, and it shows one's character. So everything start with a thought and it manifests in our character, but it started in a thought. Are y'all with me so far? So my God, you can look at a person's character and when you see the character, you know how they think. Oh, can I teach you this morning? Cause see, I don't want us to get too hyped and I don't want to, I don't want to get too passionate because I want to drop something on you. My God, it's going to stay with you three or four weeks and two or three months from now. So when you judge, I'm going to use that word, a person's character, you're looking at their mind. Because a person act out in their actions what they think. So people will tell you, my God, what, how they feel about this if you don't read it. People will tell you, my God, how they feel about prayer at 6 o'clock because they don't come. See what I'm trying to say? So our character, my God, is derived from our thoughts. Look at your neighbor and say, as a man thinking, so is he. To go a little deeper, you are the sum total of your own thoughts. This is familiar verbiage here at Going Over Christ Church because we are a discipleship church. We're not a church. We don't do church. We do. Church don't change you. Okay. More opportunities has been lost. Some of you right now is very frustrated. And I'm taking my time in the introduction. Very frustrated because doors is closed and you're wondering why. I just liberated you. 
More opportunities has been lost, withheld, and forfeited, my God, because of attitude than any other cause. For the believer, what we think about God and his word is displayed in our attitude, especially, oh my God, especially while going through trials and tribulation. You can have a good attitude when it's good, but can you have one when it's... That's why I was so excited in class, because Pastor Lenny, my God, Minister Lenny was teaching my sermon today. Come on, somebody. Part of embracing your in-between is developing and maintaining a proper attitude. How you go into life. I want to encourage some of you, my God, because you're called with great destinies. There's great greatness on the inside of you, but you have to embrace. That's external, my God, but the internal is mindset. Attitude. Attitude and mindset kiss one another. So after I embrace my calling, after I accept my God, what God has showed me in a dream or a vision, now I got to embrace and then I got to prepare my mind to go to war. Because that's going to be, you're going to have to pay a price to fulfill, like Joseph had to, what God has called you to do. So, point number one, let's talk about, my God, developing an attractive attitude. Uh, who wants to be around somebody that's always negative? And you go to going off for of Christ church, listen to the name of the church and look how nasty your attitude is. Uh, don't let your attitude mock your life. Don't let your attitude mock your witness. Who am I talking to in the church? Mm. Yes, Lord. We're talking about watching your attitude as you go and embrace your in-between. Because as I've spoken to your spirit, you have greatness in you. The Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made, my God. But many doors has closed in people's lives, spiritually and naturally, because this one word called attitude. Your attitude, write this down, will qualify you or disqualify you. Mm. There are some attitudes we need to develop. And how do we develop an attitude that's attractive? Watch this. How do you and I, I and you, develop an attitude that is attractive? For one, don't allow where you are to make you look like where you are. Uh, don't let everybody, you don't have to let everybody know you're always in the midst of some storms. You don't have to, you don't have to work your trial on you. You don't have to worry your circumstance on you. Can I help you understand something, my God? Please, 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 please. Quit telling people on Facebook everything you got going on in your life. Quit calling your sisters and brothers and contaminating them with negativity because you want somebody to agree with your victim mentality. You don't have to look like what you're going through, baby. I promise you, baby, I don't look nothing like what I'm going through on the inside, baby. I can't get nobody to say that right there. And so part of developing, my God, an attractive attitude is that you and I have to understand, my God, that we have to embrace, which is a mindset, part of external embracing. Like when I embrace my baby, when I embrace my baby, that's external. You can do all that external, but you got to embrace the will of God for your life. If not, my God, you will be a frustrated Christian because you always rejecting what God is trying to do to prepare you to reach your destiny. Who am I talking to in the church, my God? See, that was heavy right there. Because if you don't embrace the will of God for your life, something is supposed to bless you, circumstances is supposed to promote you, situation is supposed to purge you, my God. You will squander away because you don't see it as the will of God. That's why you got to embrace it and say, God, nevertheless, whatever you want to do, however you want to do it, I'm with it. Let's get it, baby. Come on, somebody. And so you don't have to always look like what you're going through. And you don't need to tell everybody. What you learn how to go through stuff in silence. I didn't say learn how to suffer in silence. I said go through stuff in silence. There's a difference. Oh no, here she come again, Lord. Baby, hide me. Come on, walk with me, baby. Talk to me. Come on, come on, baby. I'm talking to my wife. Come on, baby, walk with me. I don't want to. Here he come again. It's always the same old, same old. Every time you see them, they just. Mm. Part of developing attractive attitude, you don't have to look like. What you're going through. You don't. Don't allow, my God, like I said, where you are at to make you look like where you are. Where you are. What this means is that make the best of the place you are now. Stop walking around with a defeated mentality. Because as I told y'all, right now where you at, 
You and I, I and you, have told God, use me. Show me. Speak to me. I want to live holy. I want to live righteous. You said sanctify me. Teach me how to love. Teach me how to forgive. See, we forget the prayers that we pray to God. And some of the places that you are right now, all God is doing is honoring what you asked him to do. Oh, but because he didn't do it the way you thought that he was going to do it. <laughs> and so now you are squandering. Now you got a nasty attitude, a bad attitude about what you're going through. But God is saying, if you get still, get your flesh under submission to your spirit, all you're going to see is when I show you that I'm honoring what you asked me to do. You told me to help you, for teach you how to forgive. You told me to sanctify your mind. You told me, my God, to, to, to get lust up out of my spirit. You told me to keep my legs. I can't get nobody. And all I'm trying to do is help you I'm just trying to answer your prayer Lord my babies I'm just trying to answer what am I trying to teach you well you got to shift your attitude about what you're going through because you asked God to help you now he's helping you now you bitter mm. and circumstances and situation that's supposed to help you you ask God for why you asking for that's why I teach y'all quit asking God for stuff you ain't ready for oh my God. if you ain't ready to live holy quit asking God to make you holy because all they're gonna do is honor your prayers and many of us is frustrated and got a nasty attitude about something that God has birthed to bless you. And it feel like a curse because you got the wrong outlook and the wrong attitude about what you're going through. Have you ever took time to say, God, is this you? Instead of getting angry and bitter. If you allowing this to go, are you allowing this situation? What are you trying to teach me? How are you trying to develop me? Well, it was good for me that I was afflicted. It's in the furnace of affliction that God molds you and shapes you, baby. You got to go through something if you're going to develop an attitude that's attractive, baby. God got to put his hands on you if you're going to develop an attitude that's attractive. And when God is developing you, I promise you, it ain't always feeling good. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. I just looked at someone I won't call their name or her name. I'm going to use both of them, just, just speaking in general. Some doors are closed. They were supposed to close. You are angry and been angry for years because that door closed. But you ain't never took time to come down there and say, God, was you the reason why that door closed? God, thank you for closing that door, my God, because that wasn't, I thought it was for me, but it wasn't for me. I wanted that so bad, but you didn't want it for me. See, if you learn how, my God, to understand, my God, that you really, can I help you, can I help you, can I help you, Lord, have mercy. You only want what God wants for you anyway. Can I help you understand, sir, because what God has for you is pure. It's good. It comes to bless you. It comes to prosper you. It comes to move you forward, woman of God. You shouldn't want nothing if it ain't from God and God been created for you. Why do you want it? That's why the late Dr. Miles, and he said, get in your spot. Can't nobody beat you being in your spot. Get in your own spot and do your own thing. Quit worrying about everybody else because you probably can't handle what Janice got. You know, y'all can't handle what the first lady got to go through to walk with me, baby. Oh, my God, I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. You can want something that you can't handle, baby. Oh, my God, I said you can want something that you can't handle. Woo! You might not can't walk in her shoes. You might not can't walk in the quarter shoes. You might not can't walk. Come on and toy your shoe. You might not can't handle four kids. Come on, somebody. So Joseph, so Joseph, so Joseph, Joseph had a dream. And the dream took him to, on a series of events that wasn't popular. His brothers lied. I mean, his brothers disliked him. Some of us has been through that, hating on him, jealousy. They wanted to kill him, but instead, Reuben them said, nah, let's not kill him, you know what I'm saying? Let's just sell him. Put him in a pit, and they sold him. But see what you got to understand? Write this down. This ought to help some of y'all. Some of this has to do with some of us that's been up for adoptions. We've been in foster homes. You sold. And it's been given over into purpose. Who write that down? God allowed you to be in that foster home because he put you in purpose. See, because God say, my thoughts is not your thoughts and my ways. See, God sees your destiny more than you see your destiny. And so he said, you, your, your mama, even though she birthed you, she didn't have the capacity to raise you. So instead, so God protected you. By giving you to a foster parent that did raise you. 
Now, if they did not handle you right, that's part of the plan, too. All things are working together for the good. Know how to use scripture in context and quit just quoting it when it's only beneficial. All the pain you've been through, all the people, oh my God, all things work together for the good. All things, look at his name, say it's working together for the good. And so Joseph was sold into purpose. Poor Joseph was 17, going through the 17, but he was sold into purpose. God, I told the class this morning, that's why you got to come to class. And I told them only the religious folks think they don't need class. They think they have arrived. I love class. I can't wait to sit up on the ministry line. I've been sitting up on the ministry line since 2003, and I don't never get tired. He got so much revelation that I need on my way to fulfilling what God has called me to do. Quit thinking you have arrived. Stay hungry. Matthew 5 and 6, write that down. Blessed is the man who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Stay hungry. Or are you students, don't, read more, don't, do, don't focus more on your schoolwork and neglect your time with God. Stay hungry for God. And God will give you the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding. And you didn't even study for the test, but God bless you because you put him before your school. I can't get it. I didn't, even, I, I didn't even have to study and pass the test because God give you wisdom. Daniel had aptitude. He had an attitude. Mm, oh, my God. The wisdom of God far exceed anything natural, carnal, or fleshly. So make sure you stay balanced. That's to encourage you. Stay balanced. Stay balanced. Joseph was sold into purpose. Are y'all with me so far? Stop walking around defeated, as I said. We must have, write this down, or whatever it takes. Attitude. Whatever it takes. That's what John had, Tanya. Whatever it takes. I refuse to come back to talk so my God without a contract. And he did not come back without one. When the odds were stacked against him. It was 300 people trying out to make a 15-man squad. John made it to the last day, and they was going to cut John. John tried to dunk on Patrick Ewan last day. It was doing a fast break, and Patrick was running seven feet tall, and John was on his, on his way to the fast break. John said it in his book, My John Stalks My Life. He said, I want to try to impress. He made it all the way down to the last day of cuts, and they was going to cut John. Patrick Ewan coming down the floor, John going down the floor. John seen him, looked at me, and, ooh, Brandon looked at me, in, and he said, I got to try to impress the people, so he took off. And Patrick, seven feet tall, met John in the air and blocked the dunk. John came down and twisted, I think, as his knee on his back. My God, so they had, they couldn't release you. Divine intervention. They can't release you if you hurt in camp. And so therefore, they put him on a 10-J injury reserve. Trent Tucker was the shooting guard. Trent Tucker got hurt. Pat Riley called John up out of injury reserve and the rest of his history. And his first game he ever played in the NBA was against Mike. And Michael Jordan told John, he said, after the night, you're going to be calling me Mr. Jordan. John said, you a lie, but he ended up having to call Mike Mr. Jordan. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, my God, that was the divine intervention because my brother was finna get cut. So what looked like a bad thing turned out to be a God thing. Who am I talking to in the church? He had to be injured in order to make the team. I can't get nobody to say nothing. So God hid him, my God, for two weeks and then called him forth. Some of y'all, God got you hid, my God, for he called you forth. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Oh, the one that I'm way past him. I'm way past y'all, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God got to hide you sometime before he show you. That was a divine intervention right there, my God. Because God, to my brother, said, I will not come back without a contract. But he had to be placed on in the reserve for 10 days and had to wait for Trent Tucker to get hurt. And then God said, now come forth. Joseph, come forth. Paul, come forth. Champ, come forth. Tiki, come forth. Naila, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. Who am I talking to in the church? God is waiting to bring you forth. So sometimes God got to hide you. Before he showed you. He was protecting him. If he hadn't got hurt, he would have came home without the contract. Somebody write, ooh, Shabbat, she killed a little Somebody write down divine intervention. You frustrated about stuff, but it's divine. It had to happen that way. Divine connection. Oh, Brendan, divine connection. You had to go that way that you would have never, ah, I can't get nobody to say nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, she can't almost shut down. Divine connection. Yes, Lord. Mm. 
Yes, Lord, whatever it takes. As leaders and pastors and as people of God, in this day and time that we're living in, you got to have a whatever it takes mentality because the word of God is being compromised. Oh, my God, the pool pit is being misrepresented. Oh, you uh, people are being anything and anything, my God, in the church. The devil is a lie. God is still a holy God. He's still about sanctification. He's still about striving right. We cannot use God's grace as I've been teaching y'all to practice and live in sin. The devil is a lie. Sin killed our Lord and Savior. So get that out of your belief system that it's okay. God going to forgive me. Grace going to cover me. Yes, grace cover you. But grace, my God, and mercy, my God, gives you and I an opportunity to repent and turn from what we keep struggling with. Who am I talking to in the church? See, you got to have a right attitude. A lot of us got the wrong attitude when it comes to grace. We think that we can keep doing what we're doing because we tell ourselves, God, that's the wrong attitude. And the devil got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Christians that think that it's okay for me to live how I want to live. I got this one saved, always saved type mentality, and I promise you, he's going to say, depart from me. I never got intimate with you. Because watch this, thank you, Holy Ghost. God has got me. Attitude, attitude, watch this. Let me help some of y'all. Because some mm, see, intimacy, if I'm intimate with someone, oh my God. If I'm intimate with someone, my God, there's a different level of connection. There's a different level of anointing. There's a different level of loyalty. Uh, I want to spend time with her. I want to go eat some pancakes like we did yesterday. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh my God, when you're intimate with somebody, you want to be around them. Uh, there's people that's in church but not intimate with the God who died for the church. You could be in church and not intimate with God. You could quote scripture and not know the voice of the God of the scripture. Who am I talking to in the church? Oh my God. Uh, you can know all the protocol. You can know all the words, all the lingo, and still not be in God. Attitude. Attitude. Somebody look at your name and say, watch your attitude. So what type of attitude do you got right now dealing with your in-between? God has showed you some things. God has showed you some things. God has closed some doors and God has revealed prosperity to you in many different ways and uh, your life don't look like your dream. What God showed you in the midnight hour, when you look at the quality of your life right now, it's upside down right now. Uh, it's not looking real good. I know you said, Pastor, uh, if I don't like what's manifesting external, I got to look at what's going on internal. But now you got me confused, Pastor, because some of the stuff that's manifesting external, I just learned, my God, that it might be God stirring up the pot. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Come on. So who am I talking to? Stay with me now. Don't let me lose you. So I don't want you to get bitter because some of your external situations, my God, don't feel good, don't look good, my God. Just sit back, my God, and understand that God's will has been orchestrated in your life, my God. And even what we cause, even what we cause, God then, according to Romans 8, 2, 8, even what we cause and even what God calls, then and only then can we say with the enemy, for evil or bad, God will turn it around. Don't you know God can take your mistakes and my mistakes like he did? you looking at a mistake that just been turned around. I can't. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, my God. He would take your mistakes as we teach you a mess on your way to progress. And so I, my situations don't look good external right now. I want to encourage you. Watch your attitude about what you're going through right now. Because everything you're going through ain't the devil. And some of the stuff you're going through right now is God designed Look at what Joseph had to go through. He had to be in the pit, prison, on his way to the palace. There are some pit stops that's not comfortable. Oh, my God. Yeah, oh my God. There are some pit stops that's not comfortable, baby. Uh, there's some things that we, mm, that's uncomfortable. God got his hands on you. God is molding you and shaping you, my God. You just got to stay the course. You just got to stay the course. You just got to stay the course, even when you don't understand. That's why the word of God, woman of God says, lean not into your own understanding. Acknowledge thee in all thy ways, and I will direct thy steps. Thank you. Thank you, you don't understand it all, just trust God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, my God. Some of us right now need to say, God, I've been mishandling, and I got a bad attitude about everything I've been dealing with. I'm blaming everybody for my attitude. I'm blaming everybody, my God, for this and that. My mama sold me, my mama did this, daddy did that. And all that God is using, my God, to execute his will on your way to your destiny. Let's go a little deeper. I'm not helping anybody so far. Mm, I felt this one. Mm. Or whatever it takes. That was the mindset my brother had. And when I accepted Christ April the 3rd of 1995, I had that same mindset. 
whatever it takes. What did I say? I'm going on to see what the end of a saved life. I don't care who come to this church, and I don't care who lead this church. I, 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 me and my baby talk, I, I would never give another man or woman the power to make me shipwreck and quit on God because of what you do or don't do. That devil, and many of us has quit on God, wrong attitude. We have let people frustrate us so much to where we don't read like we used to, we don't trust like we used to, we don't love God like we used to, we have shut down on God, even though we are at church, but we are not going hard after the things of God because we let another man or woman discourage us to the point we gave that man or woman that much power and authority over us. The devil is a lie. Never give another human being that much power to make you quit on God, on Yahshua. Oh, Yahweh, how you gonna make them the person that died for you? He gave his life for you and you quit on him. I didn't quit on the devil. I showed they ain't gonna quit on God. I said, I didn't quit on the devil, brother. And I showed they gonna quit on God. Yes, Lord. Some of us gotta get the whatever it takes mentality. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can call it what you want, baby. But it's going to take that in this hour we're living in. Oh, my God, the church is so, my God, vulnerable because we are so weak and powerless. We just accept anything the world bring at us. If the world do it, we supposed to do it. We're using all these gimmicks and gimmicks to try to get people to come to the world, to the house of the Lord, but preach the gospel, and they will come. Stand for truth and righteousness, they're going to come. That's what the Bible says. Oh, I didn't get too many amens on that. Yeah, yeah. Jesus preached the gospel when they came. And the Bible says that the disciples, my God, and Christ added to the church daily. I still believe there's a remnant really of people that want truth. They don't want hype. They don't want emotionalism. They want truth. The butt naked truth. Somebody give a hard hand for the truth. Let's go a little deeper. Let's go a little deeper. Uh, there is an invisible line that separates those who get things done from those who merely dream about it. After you dream, get it done. When God reveal your purpose to you, follow it. When God show you what he created you to do, get about doing it. Quit making excuses. Quit waiting on you to get the right loan. Quit waiting on your credit to get up. Quit waiting for your student loan to get paid. Do what God told you to do. See, you worry about stuff. That's God's business. You do what God told you to do. The door open up, we shift it. God is responsible for this. I do my part, God has been doing his part. See, many of you are disqualifying yourself out of true mindset because you gotta have, you feel like everything got to be lined up for you to move, for you to shift, for you to obey. If you don't have all your ducks lined up, you're swerving down, it ain't God. The devil is a lie. Sometimes things will get so chaotic before it get better. Things will look so bleak. Come on, Joseph went through all kind of stuff. My God, how in the world you going to tell me that I'm going to be second in command? I'm in a pit, but I've been lied on, and I've been accused of rape. My God, my brothers don't like me. My father, my God, didn't abandon me. How in the world you going to tell me this is God? Yeah, it's God. It was good for me. There's an invisible line, though, that separates those who get things done from those who are merely dreaming about it. It isn't enough to do what God says and yet grumble, make a plane at the same time. We talking about developing an attractive attitude. So if I'm doing it but I'm complaining all the time, that's a problem. You know what that is? That's mockery. Quit talking about God on your job. Quit trying to evangelize, evangelize your job. Continue to do that, but don't shoot yourself in the foot. When stuff go wrong, or you get an email, or they send something across the, uh, the, the microphone or whatever, my God, don't have the same attitude that everybody else has. Be different. Then you did it. I'm going to prove it to you, and I'm moving. You got to be different. People are looking for something different. That's why I says now, I told you Wednesday, my God, they can, ooh, come to Bible study on Wednesdays. We finishing up our lifestyle still matters. If you can come out on some Wednesday, come out. We got Bible study on Wednesday. If you're looking online, come out. We got Bible study on Wednesday. A lot of churches don't do Wednesdays. We have got so to the point where all we do is worry about preaching hype on Sundays. I have no idea the stuff that's going on. And I'm going to leave that alone. I have no idea. If I could show y'all, y'all sure would appreciate y'all, Pastor. The things that I had to deal with. It's a lot going on, woman of God, and men of God, in the body of Christ. Like I tell y'all, some of the things Pastor release, it ain't just going off of Christ Church. I ain't just dealing with you. I ain't just dealing with your stuff. It's a lot going on, man. You appreciate somebody that really striving to live and do right, man. I'm telling you, man. It's a lot of pastors not having their business, man. I'm telling you. 
Thank you. My only my babies over the only ones that appreciate their pastor. Ah! Somebody give God a hand. Amen, Toya. Amen, Toya. Amen. Amen. And so therefore, my God, we can't continue to complain about the will. Last time I checked Joseph, my God, it don't say that. If, if it do, I don't know. I ain't seen it. Joseph didn't show too much complaining, if any complaining, on his way to his destiny. Write down Numbers chapter 11, verses 4 through 6. Then the foreign rabble who was traveling with the Israelites, that's, 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 uh, let me slow down. That's Numbers chapter 11, verses 4 through 6. Then the foreign rabble who were traveling with the Israelites began to crave the good things of Egypt. Egypt in the Bible represents captivity. If you bring it up to our time, it represents the world. Are you still craving the world, Christians? Is the world more entertaining than the church? I heard one of my sons call me, said my wife said my church is boring, Pastor. And he said, this is what I told her. How much time are you spending in God? Outside of church, are you reading? Are you praying? If the church and reading your Bible and prayer is boring, you're in a bad place. If you don't feel energized, I've been up since five this morning. If you don't look, I get excited when I get to see the people of God. Because I get to watch God do things and people lie. I love when you got Kleenex. I love when you're down on your face, my God. I love when I see my baby on the altar, my God, giving God the glory, my God. Oh, my God. It's an honor to be in the house of the Lord, my God. If you get like, I got to go to church, my God. I got to go see them. I got to go listen to that. Oh, my God. Uh, don't come back. I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. I don't need you. I don't need you. I don't need you. God needs you, but I don't. The Israelites begin to crave the good things of Egypt. My God, are you craving the world? The Bible says, come out from amongst them. Be ye separate. That don't mean you have no contact with people that's unbelievers, but there's a time where you got to crave the things of God. If your appetite for the things of God is not increased and you've been doing church for any length of time, something is wrong with your pursuit. That's why God said in Matthew 5 and 6, blesses the man who hunger. And thirst, it's a continued hunger and it's a continued thirst. If you are sitting and professing to be a Christian and you never read your Bible, and if you do read it, my God, you may read it for three or four minutes, maybe five minutes just to clear your conscience, and that's all your pursuit, you're in bad, you're not going to make it. I promise you, you're not going to make it. The world is going to get you. It's going to get you because the world is too strong right now. My God, the greatest secret teach, this book right here teach, whatever voice is the loudest, that's the voice you go to. If the world is still the loudest, that's where you're going. If your friend's voice is louder than accountability, that's where you're going. If the devil and the world and partying and kicking is louder than, my God, sanctification, holiness, righteousness, guess what you're going back to? If you don't love what God loves, my God, you're going to start entertaining what the devil has for you to entertain. Because whatever you worship, whatever you value, you worship. <laughs> they crave the good things of Egypt. And the people of Israel also began to complain. Oh, for some meat, they exclaimed. We remember the fish we used to eat for free. There you go right there. I highlighted that. We remember in Egypt, in captivity, up under a physical furrow, being told what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. We remember the food, man of God, that we ate for free. So they see in captivity, free attitude. I'm being told what to do, how to do, when to eat, when to take a shower, when whatever. And because I got some food that's tangible, tangible. And I'd rather go back to captivity and eat free food than live in freedom. I'd rather go eat free food in captivity than live in freedom. See, see what I say? Look at the attitude. I, I, I crave something. They cried out to be delivered from the furrow. And then when God delivered them out of it, they decided to go back to it. Just like some of you. You came out of pressure. You came out of trial. You came out of tribulation. Now the squeeze is off. And now you want to go back to the very thing you cried to get out of. Who am I talking to? That's... You cried and said, Lord, help me. And he helped you. Now you want to go right back to the very thing that led you to God. That's a form of insanity. I walked down the street crying out to God when I was sick and strung out. How in the world am I going to go back to something that could kill me, took my family? The devil is alive. You got to have a whatever it takes back. You can't never go back. Somebody say, I can't never go back. <laughs> come on, Pastor. Come on. Ah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't go back. I won't go back. Ain't nothing they got to offer me. Hey! That's a freedom cry. That's a freedom cry. Hey! Oh, freedom! Freedom, Lord! Freedom, Lord! Hey! Oh, Jesus! Can't go back. Can't go back. Can't go back. Can't go back. Can't go back, baby. My attitude won't let me go back. I love God too much. I've been on death door. He bought me out. He's been too good to me. He's been too good to me. I love the Lord more than I love the world. I love the Lord more than I love sex. I love the Lord more than I love dope. I love the Lord more than I love gambling. I love the Lord more than I love pornography. I love the Lord. I can't go back. I can't go back. I can't go back. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, God. It's me, God. It's me, God. It's me, God. Help me, God. I can't do it. I can't. Hey. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, take that. I said, yeah, take that. Yeah, take all what you see. Some of y'all may say, do it. Take that. Yeah, take that. Yeah, take that. I said, take that. I can't go back. I can't go back. Yeah, take that. I refuse to go back. Hey, my God, I can't go back. Oh, the devil almost killed me. Why would I want to go back? I almost lost my marriage. Why would I want to go back? Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, there you go, Sandra. Hey, I know God has spoke. I know he has spoke. Come on, daughter. Hey, Toya, I know he spoke now, baby. I know he just spoke. Ah, hey, 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 hey. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Woo. Oh, my God. Yeah, 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 Lord. Yeah, 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 Lord. Oh, my God. Whatever it takes, I say whatever it takes, whatever it takes, uh, whatever it takes, Lord. Yeah, 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 whatever it takes, Lord. Oh, my God. Whatever it takes, Lord. Come on, y'all. I know how to obey God. This is God's house. Somebody need to come on and talk to the Lord. Whatever, Lord. Whatever, Lord. Whatever I got to do, God. I refuse to go back, Lord. I'm going on, Lord. I said, I'm going on, Lord. To see what the end of a say life going to be like. Oh, my God. Push me forward, Lord. Push me forward, Lord. It's me, God. It's me, God. It's me, God. It's me, God. Woo, Jesus. Woo. Yeah, come on, don't stop, come on, don't stop. Y'all just shift the whole service. Come on, come on, come on up, son. Y'all just shifted the whole service. You might as well come on and get it. You made me close the book. I said you made me close the book. Y'all know when pastor closed the book, that means the spirit of God is saying what he needed to say. I didn't even get through with point one, but I know how to obey God. I ain't got no agenda. My agenda is God's agenda. But when he say shift, I shift. When he say quit, I quit. Ain't no pride up here, baby. It's kingdom living up here. Come on and get what you need. Do you got whatever it takes? Get out your seat and get down there as we get ready to close this service. Come on, I need to talk to some whatever it takes people. I need to talk to some whatever it takes, my God. Do you got whatever it takes? I refuse to go back. I refuse to go back to Egypt. I refuse to go back to bondage. I ain't picking up the dope sack. I ain't going back to the club. I ain't letting you back in my life. Do I need the money? I don't love you enough, but I don't need the money that much. So I'm allow you to mishandle me, talk to me, and cheat on me, and abuse me, and mishandle my body. I ain't gonna allow you back in my space no more. The devil is a lie. I refuse to go back to pornography. I refuse to go back to gambling. I refuse to go back to being that woman. Living a lie. 
I refuse to go back struggling with my identity. One day I want to be a man. One day I want to be a woman. The devil is a lie. They said, whatever it takes, I'm determined. I'm determined. I want to talk to some just Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was determined. He ran up the tree. He said, if I can climb up this tree, Jesus is getting ready to pass this way. Zacchaeus said, I can't miss God. Some of you, if you don't step out the river and come down, come down, get up out the river. Get up out the seat and come on down and get in the river. You can't miss God. Somebody's life depends on your decision. I want to talk to some Zacchaeus. The Bible said that Zacchaeus ran ahead of the crowd. Minister Tanya clammed up a sycamore tree. Is anybody desperate? Oh, you got to be like the woman with the issue of blood. Oh, my God, if I can just get to Jesus. If I can just get to Jesus. Do I think it's get to Jesus?
grandkids, your daughter don't want to help you, your kids father and left went off and left you, you're all by yourself, you're robbing people to pay Paul, you got to have that attitude or whatever it takes, I won't quit, I ain't giving up my children, I ain't handing over my children, my mama raised seven kids and she kept all seven of them, when she wanted to walk out and said I don't want to come back, but the love of our kids kept bringing them back, who am I talking to in the church? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? It's business today. Oh my God, I'm troubled, woman of God. Oh my God, Patrice, bring me up to the altar. You stop. Come on, woman of God. Come on up, Ruby. Come on, woman of God. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Get up at the altar. Get up. She's stuck. She's stuck. Break that chain up, my mother. Break that chain up, my mother. The devil is a lie. Come on, come on, baby. Come on. The devil is a lie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your flesh don't want to, daughter, but your spirit has to. Who in my life got to suffer? Don't play the victim mentality. Greater is he that is in you, woman of God, than he that is in the world. Don't let the devil rob you of an opportunity to get free. Don't stay in Egypt in your mind. Whatever it takes, woman of God, the devil is your life. Ah, Jesus. Oh, my sheep, hey, da, 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 Provoke you, provoke you, provoke you. Come on up, Rob Bright. We need a little washer. Come on, Rob Bright. Give me some washer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me some washer. That's my prayer won't do. Don't quit on your wife. Uh, 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 man of God. Don't quit pleasure. Don't quit my God. Don't quit on us, Tanya. Yes. Stay down with us, woman of God. Yes. Come on. We give you glory, yeah, Jesus. Yeah. Come on, push me. We give you glory push. in this place.
if you are free, I want you to lift up a shout in this place. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Now we're not playing today. We're not here to play. Come on, come on. Get, cry out your freedom. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. 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 Who
the sun sets free, free, whom the sun sets free, 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 whom the sun sets free. I'm free whom the sun sets free is free I'm free whom the sun sets free is free I receive it whom the sun sets free is free I believe it whom the sun sets free is free I declare it and receive it I declare it over my life I declare it all sets free is free I declare it the sun sets free is free I declare it all sets free is free What says the word? When the sun, sun, bring me down just a little bit, son. Sammy. The Bible says, whom the sun has set free. It's free indeed. What the Spirit of the Living God was trying to convey, y'all keep worshiping, just stay soft. What the Spirit of God was trying to convey is that you gotta begin to adopt a proper attitude on your way to fulfilling your destiny. You can't see everything as the devil. You can't see everything as somebody else's fault. You can't continue to deflect responsibility. You can't continue to blame people about your condition. You can't continue to make excuses on your way to where God is taking you. Attitude will open up doors for you or attitude will close doors for you. My God, if the Lord delay is coming, we will be finishing that up. <clears throat> Next Sunday coming up, if the Lord delay is coming. But we have jumped, we have shouted, and we have declared. And we are free because Jesus said, if you come to me, you're free. Whom the Son set free is free indeed. That means some things you are automatically delivered from. Other things, church, you have to walk out. And so just because you may be struggling in certain areas don't mean that you're not free. Quit letting the devil rob you, my God, of your freedom. Oh, my God. God deliver you instantly from certain things and other things. He got to allow to stay attached to you because people need to see you walk through that. So it, can, so it can bring encouragement to other people. Now that we have accepted our freedom... Again, now you have to protect your freedom and walk your freedom out. That means that you have to make decisions and you got to develop for whatever it takes. When you go home, the devil is waiting for you. When you get in your car, the devil is waiting for you. For some of you, when you go back to your job, oh my God, the enemy is waiting for you. But you got to continue to guard that whatever it takes to not let your mind and your attitude become negative. Because, it's, because God is using, my God, all the stuff to prepare you, my God, for where he's taking you. No matter what it feel like, no matter what it feel like, no matter what it feel like. I want to say this to validate my closing. Some of you have already heard me say this, but I'm going to say it again. Two months before I got out of prison, my grandma crossed over who raised me from cancer and while my grandma was fighting for her life from cancer I'm released from prison my mama and my baby sister also are dying from cancer at the same time mama grandma and sister my baby sister who left my niece and my nephew here are all dying from cancer I'm fresh out of prison trying to learn how to live a productive life in society. Trying to stay away from gang life, drug life, and everything else that's connected with Egypt, the world. If I had 
and needed an excuse, y'all, to go back. I had it. But because I told myself when I was in prison the second time that it ain't no shadow of turning, I'm going on to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. Not knowing that my grandma was going to die, my mama was going to die, and my sister all at the same time within 18 months apart, my God, would die. If I ever needed an excuse, I had it right then to go back to the world. But I had a whatever it takes mentality. I live what I preach to y'all. You got to develop a whatever it takes because there's going to be some things that come against you. And your purpose and your dream and your vision, your business, your marriage, your children. My God, Sister Tina, and you're going to have to have a whatever it takes mentality to refuse to go back. So stretch your hands as we pray. Father, I pray that you continue to deposit into our belief system. Let it not just be words, but let it become a part of our belief system. And then your word decrees that as we think, so we become. We are now thinking whatever it takes. I refuse to go back. And I'm going on. No matter if I understand it. No matter if I don't like it. No matter if it don't feel good, sound good, or look good. I'm going on. So Father God, we thank you. We thank you. Father God, your spirit has stopped by going off for Christ church. And you have spoken. And I can sense by your spirit, Father God, that the people are encouraged. Many of them was ready to quit. Many of them was ready to go back. Some may have went back, but now they got the desire to come out. So, Father God, I thank you for all that you have said and all that you have done. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as I release the men and women of God as well as the children, I release them into your care. Father God, help them go up what has been deposited into their belief system, Father God. Help them to protect. Mm. Father God, don't let the wheel, Father God, go, go away soon as they get in their car keep their tenacity up let them tell themselves father god whatever it take i will not bow i will not give in i am not going back i refuse to surrender it can't have me she can't have me he can't have me it can't have me that can't have me i got a whatever it takes mm, down in my soul father god i thank you for him. i pray your protection i pray your keeping power Increase their tenacity to spend time with you so they can continue to develop the whatever it takes mentality and attitude, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Father God, I'm also asking that you restore us all back to our rightful place in you, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you have forgiven us. We receive forgiveness. We are not walking around in condemnation, shame, and guilt. We surrender and we submit. We thank you, Father God, for receiving us back. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Come on, going off of Christ's family. Let's give God a big hand. Come on, give God a big hand.